How's it going everyone? Today we're going to look at Git storage. So taking a look at the Git storage pub dev site, it says here it's a fast, extra light, and synchronous key value in memory, which backs up data to disk at each operation. So what it says it's not though, is it says it is not a database. So with that information, I feel like this could be good for something simple. So what we're going to do is a mock settings page. So the first thing we're going to do is install Git storage into our app. So I'm gonna type in flutter pub add git storage. If everything worked correctly, we should be able to go up here and go to our pubspec YAML file and see it in there. Next, we'll gut everything from here down. We're gonna change the name to storage app. I'm gonna create a stateful widget by typing in STFUL. We'll create our material app and our scaffold. And we'll just do a quick app bar that just says get storage example. Okay, looks like it always does. We'll go ahead and import get storage at the top. And then we're going to initialize it here in main. And since we're awaiting it, we need to async it. Up here at the top of storage app state, I'm going to set up a variable I'm going to call data. And we're calling get storage with it. And then in the app bar, we're just going to add So what this is, is it's a ternary operator. Now what a ternary operator is, is it's more or less just a simplified if then statement. So what this is saying is, if there is an example key inside data, display it. If there is not, just show NA. And when we take a look at it, you'll see that it just says NA right now because we haven't written anything to the container. Now we'll go ahead and add an elevated button to the body. So this is what the screen looks like now. And if it works correctly, when you press the elevated button, it should write to the example container, the phrase it works. So when it refreshes, the data.read of the example container should show it works here in the app bar. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna press press me, and there it is, it works. So this shows you dot read and it shows you dot write. We're gonna add one more button so I can show you dot remove. So I'm gonna grab this elevated button here, and instead I'm gonna do a column. Paste that back in and paste the second one. Then I'll format the document. So instead of press me, we will do clear me. And then in the set state, we'll just do a data dot remove example. So we now see the two buttons, press me and clear me. If I press clear, this should switch back to NA now. Let's see. And there it is. So now we will do our real world example, which is a mock-up settings page. We're gonna start by adding some default settings. Up here inside storage app state, we'll just create a map right here. And then we'll just put some dummy data in here like sound enabled, false, music enabled, false, show notifications, false, just common things that you might see on a settings page. And above this, I'm just going to create the official settings variable that we're going to use for this app. So now right here, we're going to do an init state. And we're gonna add this right here. 
so this init state here is going to run when the app first starts. And what we're doing in here is we're going to set the settings variable to the data that's in the settings container for get storage if it exists. If it doesn't exist, which it won't the first time we run it, we're going to set settings to these default settings we have up here. Hopefully that makes sense. Now inside this column here, we're going to do a list view builder. So we're going to build a list view based off of settings and it's going to use the key from settings. The title is going to be the key itself, which is this right here. And then the value is going to be true or false. So we restarted it and this is what it looks like so far, but it will not do anything yet. We need to set up something in the on changed. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add a set state. And then I'm going to do a settings key equals value. So now you can see that you can check them. But if I check all of these and I hit restart, it goes back to unchecked. So we need to save it to get storage now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this press me here and we're just going to change this to save settings. And then right here above the set state, we're going to do await data.write settings, settings. And of course, since we've got the await, we're going to need to do async here. And then in the set state, we can just do something like print saved and it'll print to the console. So if everything worked correctly, we should be able to restart. And then I'm going to check one of these. I'm going to hit save settings. We should see saved here. I just noticed I did a comma instead of a period. And then if we restart it again, it stayed this time. So maybe you want to store these values in a separate container called settings specifically. Maybe you're using get storage on other parts of your app or maybe you just want to keep it separate. What you can do is up here in init, you can do, we'll just call it settings container. And then here in get storage, you can also do settings container. And you'll notice it goes back to blank, but if I check one and then hit save settings and then restart again, it's still there. And then if you need to delete the container altogether for some reason, what we'll do is we'll go down here into this clear me and I'm going to type cleared here. And then right here, I'll do an await of data dot erase. Of course, putting the async here. So now when I press clear me, we should see in the debug console that it was cleared. And then when we restart, all the checkboxes are gone. So there's a few other things I wanted to touch base on. I couldn't really figure out how to work them into the example, but we're going to look at listen, listen key and remove listen. So if we were to add a listen, we could just do data.listen And then what we could do is just say data saved. If we wanted to listen to a specific key, we could do listen key. And we would do settings. We could say settings saved or you would have access to this value here if you wanted to do something with it. And then the documentation shows this remove listen here, but if I try to use it, I do not see it in the list. So again, I'm not really sure where I could use this in the example. If you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments of how I could have used 
these in this example. So that'll wrap up our look at Git Storage. You might also like this video here. And if you're enjoying these videos and would like to see more of them, please consider subscribing. Thanks, and I hope to see you in the next one.